Hi there, this is Dabalicious, a new member of the Basic Waves team. Today I will be presenting to you an artist originally from Romania, but now based in Amsterdam. His name is Alex Preda. Alex is known for his deep melodic house productions, which captivate audiences worldwide, with releases on labels like Days Like Nights, Oddity, and Olivier Weiters, his own label, Weiter, he's a known artist in the industry. Here's a small personal twist. Alex and I actually bumped into each other on a festival seven years ago without knowing who each other was. Just two guys chatting about music production and, and, and our biggest passion. Now fast forward seven years later, it's funny that Basic Waves actually made us cross paths again. And I just wanted to mention that it's funny how the universe works. Well, without further ado, let's give a warm welcome for the talented Alex Preda. Thank you very much. Hey guys, Alex Preda here. Today I'm gonna take you to a journey of uh, me making a track. So I'll start from scratch. Let's see how far I'm gonna get with it. I'm gonna take you through my production process and also my limitations because I like to limit myself when I start uh, making a track. And the inspiration. I get inspired from music, other music, but also from external factors, maybe uh, sky, sky light in the evening or in the morning. Architecture, it's another one, and it's a pretty big one for me. I've chosen a train station which has a super nice design, it looks like a waveform, it's from Italy, um, and it's designed by Calatrava, it's an architect, and he got inspired from nature, bones of whales, etc. It's like he goes uh, quite far, and uh, his works are absolutely amazing, they're impressive. Anyway, let me pull up this picture on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Just a small part of the building, basically is the entrance. And you can see the shape, it's wavy, which resembles a waveform or, well, it can be any kind of wave, but an audio waveform, uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting representation, translation. And it has here these three uh, uh, peaks that I'm gonna use in the track. Now, I'm looking at the building also from, from the photography perspective, because the building is it's quite big. So uh, for, for the reason of the track, for the purpose of the track, I'm going to use these three pillars that we see here. And basically, I'm just going to use the structure of the building. For instance, the first peak is going to be the first build up, not too intense, you know, but just preparing for what's going to come. And then in the middle part, it's going to be the main build up with the drop and then the third pillar there is going to be the like again a little build up and then a build down so going out of the track so we're going to divide the track into three places basically uh, three parts and here you see there is an arch for the entrance and i'm going to use this one as an element uh, as a new element ca that comes in at the break perhaps a melodic or a rhythmic element we have to see and the blue sky in the background, this is a very important aspect because that's going to be the harmonic signature of the track. And I will show you when I, when I get into actually translating like one by one these elements into Ableton, I'll show you what I mean. So it's the, the, that one sound in the background that, that gives the, the, it's a texture and it gives the, a little bit, you know, of the, of the life uh, and the pulse of, of the harmony of the track. And then we have also here at the base of the picture, we have some cars, uh, there's some windows there. Uh, it's the, obviously the entrance, there looks like a shop or something. And on this other side is like some vending machines. We also have the cars parked, uh, which I'm gonna use for other elements, perhaps some lower rhythmical elements. And maybe the cars, the way they're arranged, maybe I'm gonna use them for the bass pattern. Let's see. Now, we also have these lights from the building that uh, give this transparency and perspective to the building. So I'm going to use 
for instance, the top line, I'm gonna use it for, uh, just to give that shyness of the melody. And then the middle line of the lights, I'm gonna use it for another rhythmical element in the background. Now, we have the lines that compose the building itself which I want to use as uh, pretty much as, as the main rhythm for the melody itself. So I would say quite repetitive, maybe 16 notes or so. So let's see. Yeah. Now let's uh, put everything in Ableton. I'm going to start with the structure first, the track structure, just to give myself a, you know, some limitation and a timeline. And then gonna fill them up with instruments and uh, audio clips, samples, etc. So let's get on to it. So now I'm gonna build the three parts of the track. So what I like to do, just build, uh, I'll say here, structure. And I'm going to build empty MIDI clips like this. And I'm going to make the track, let's say, around three minutes. I don't want to make it too long. Also, in this uh, age and time of, uh, <laughs> of the social media and everything, the attention span is quite limited. So we can always extend the track, you know? So I'm going to divide it into three parts. I'm going to put here markers. I like to work with markers because it really helps me to have a good uh, idea or where I'm of where I am in the track. All right, so now we have this part. Let's make it a different color. I'm gonna say maybe this color here, and here is gonna be a bit. Let's say this color. Okay, cool. So this is the structure, right? Which which resembles my three pillars here. Now let's uh, take the, the basically make a breakdown of the of the instruments. So here I'm gonna have the harmony, and this is basically my blue sky here that I'm what I was talking about earlier. And then we're gonna have uh, let's start with the bass. So the bass is gonna be well. Let me go back to the harmony. The harmony is gonna be pretty much throughout the whole track, and then we'll see where it needs to be cut. Then the bass, I would say, okay, also throughout the whole track, except, oh, yeah, except in the middle here. Maybe the, yeah, this, I would say this is going to be the break, the main break, maybe a bit too long, <laughs> but we will adjust it as we go. And this is going to be the drop. I drop, this is going to be built up one and this is going to be our build down so what i'm going to do i'm going to make a little bit of a build up here and then release and just go out of go out of the track all right now let's go back to the picture so we have this uh lines here like i was mentioning for the melody let's say now I'm going to put here the melody. And when I talk about melodies, I like to use the question and answer technique. It's quite common in music. Perhaps many of you already know about it. It's, um, it gives a little bit more life to the track. So I'll say here, melody question. And then I have here, melody answer. Okay, so the melody, I would introduce it a little bit first, uh, maybe around here. This is a bit too big. And then here again, so I'll just copy paste this part there. And then here I would just let it play. And then either come back with the melody here and then continue with it up until this point. And the question, the, sorry, the answer is going to be pretty much the same, but then all lays within the MIDI notes, within the melody itself. So we're going to go to that uh, later. I'm just going to make this a different color. Let's make it uh, assign track color to clips. Okay. 
let's see what other things we have here. We have now, we're talking about the base and, and also like a new element coming in the middle, which is this arch here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new MIDI cl uh, clip here and I'm going to say base uh, break. And this is going to be my base only at the break. So I'm going to make this a different color also. So you see what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up my map, so to speak, for my track. And then I set up a limitation with which I can work, you know, instead of going all over the place, which can happen quite often when I make music. And this is a very good place to keep everything uh, in control, so to speak. All right, so here we, we have um, in, in the middle arch here, we also have other things like the entrance, which is quite prominent. So let's say we're going to have some pads uh, there. Let's say pads. Okay, also here in the middle. And I also want to have another melody or like a different instrument at least for the same melody that I have on top there. Let's say melody break. Like this. Okay. So let's see what other things can we use from here. Well, we can take a percussion for instance because uh, we were talking about the, the lines, well, the lights in the background here in the middle part of the of the building. So let's take those lights and use them for the actual percussion. It can be the, yeah, this percussion can be anything. It can, can come from a synth or a sample. So let's see where we're going to get with it. I'm just going to say perk. And also this is going to be throughout the whole track. Pretty much. Let's... So what I'm doing right now to create the MIDI clips, I'm just pushing on a Mac, Shift, Command, and M, and it just makes a new MIDI clip. I will need here a marker to say end. So this is going to be my end, the, the end of the track. So now I can see where I can stop the instruments. All right, let's see what are the things we have in here. Mm, yeah, we were saying about these little arches underneath also. So in the context of the building, and also, like when we translate to Ableton, you can zoom in or out, right? So now we are like at, at, uh, zooming out and we can see the, the track structure and later on we're going to zoom in. So now I'm going to zoom in a little bit uh, just to, to, you know, to, to pick up some bits and pieces from other areas of the building, like I was mentioning. And um, let me make here like another track MIDI track and I'm going to say this is going to be like some tops so you know like think about percussion combined with hi-hats you know and other top elements you know that they, they are in, in the higher spectrum of the uh, frequency so I'm going to have here a whole track like this and now I'm going to split this down. So this is going to go pretty much up and down, but also with the intensity of the track itself, because as you can see, the peaks of these uh, three yeah, pillars or waves, um, they have like, of course, the, the, the ones the, the arches underneath follow that. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to follow with this tops instrument the same structure there more or less I'm gonna make it a different color but then what I want to have it here in this part for instance I want it to build to, to grow and then release so I want to have the same sort of thing before the main drop but I don't want to have it in the middle so of course here is where we're gonna Improvise, right? I'm gonna use the building as the basis, as the main inspiration, but then we're gonna go pretty much on a rabbit hole, starting with this point. And um, it's gonna be a limited rabbit hole, so not going like <laughs> on a crazy rabbit hole. Okay, now 
let's see what other elements we're missing from here. So we have the structure of the track, we have the harmony, uh, which is going to be like some ambiental sound. We have the bass, we have the melody, we have the uh, bass at the break, we have the pads, pads, percussion, we have the tops. We need a kick drum. Because we're making dance music, <laughs> I'll just say kick. Then I like to use several hats, and I'll say hat one here, hat two, and I also like to use a shaker or some repetitive element, you know, on the high spectrum of the frequency that gives this this energy, this anticipation, also. So let's say it can be here like a. <clears throat> 16th hat or a shaker. Hui. So this is a very excited part for me to uh, to work on because I know that this is going to make my workflow easier rather than just starting directly with uh, an idea, a melodic idea, and from there I just go all over the place and then I'm lost, okay, where is my track structure, where am I going to start exactly, and where am I going to go with it. So this way I have this map built, which is quite helpful and, uh, yeah, interesting. Okay, so let's see how many instruments we have here now, and if these are going to be uh, enough for our track. All right, the kick is going to go pretty much throughout, I would say, except the break. The hat, I have hat number one which I think I'm gonna bring it on here. Perhaps I go with it a little bit in the in the break. Oh. Perhaps I'll go a little bit in the break with it. And then here. Hat number two. Mm, I'm gonna bring it on here and I think I'm gonna leave it out at the break and then I'll bring it back in either here at the main drop or here. So let's let's for now just keep it, I would say, like this. The shaker, let's say you wanna start with a more high energy pace sort of vibe, then perhaps we can have this from the beginning. So let's just draw it for the whole track and then I'm gonna remove it from here, from the middle, from the break. So now, now we're gonna have the chords. This is also a very important part of the track. Just gonna make the chords here, next to the melody. And the chords, they will go pretty much throughout the whole track, um, but you will see, I'm, I'm gonna cut it out at some point. For instance, what I want to do, I want to create like a backbone of the melody itself. So I have the ambience, which gives like the tone of the track. And then I have the chords of the track, which, uh, yeah, it's the backbone for the melody. And I might start, so here in the, in the first part, I might start with just maybe, you know, one single chord or one single note for the bass and for, um, let's say, other, other elements, other textures in there and introduce the melody slowly. And then I would go on with the chords in this part and then at the break for sure, and perhaps also here. But let's see where it's gonna take us, the track. Because then I'm always gonna, you know, remove elements, bring them in and so forth. Okay. Um, I also wanna have here the drumming. I wanna have the, um, the crash. I want to have a white noise. And I want to have a low tom. And the low tom I'm going to use for the, you know, just to, to have some interaction with the kick drum. The crash is going to be accentuating uh, the, the important parts of the track. So I would say the beginning of a new musical phrase. So let's let's put it like this. Maybe in the, in the break there is not gonna be so important. There also. Let's see how often we're gonna use them. We, we don't want to overdo it, but just like a general picture of what what I want to have. 
Now the white noise, I want to use this as a, as a build-up element. So I think I'm going to introduce it here. Maybe that's a bit too long. Let's, let's keep it like this. Here, here also. And maybe there a little bit as well. So let's let's see how, how, how this goes. And then the low toms, these are gonna sit next to the kick, so I'm gonna group the drums anyway later on, but now let me see where the kick is. Kick is there. Alright. So this is gonna go pretty much for the whole duration of the kick. And just gonna be like a subgroove that the, the, the track needs, you know, just to move a little. Okay, so... Now we can start off with um, creating the chords. We need some something rhythmical and adding the harmony. So let's, let's see if we can find some nice harmony in the, uh, in the sample pack from, uh, uh, from Basic Waves. I, I, I had a look earlier and there's like a bunch of very good stuff <laughs> in there. So bear with me. And uh, let's see where we're the Okay, fix an Atmos. And the key, what I'm going to work into, I think I'm going to work in C major. Is because, uh, of course, it's, it's, <laughs> it's easier, it's all the white notes. But it has a corresponding, a corresponding key in minor as well, which is A minor, and I, I really like it. That, that key sounds very uh, nice and can be melancholic. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Now, so... So I'm looking for something either in C major or in A minor. I don't want to... These harmonies, I don't want to uh, shift them with the pitch. So I want to have them as they are recorded in their native key. So we don't have actually... Ah, here. We also have C major. Quite nice. I like this. And that, but to be honest, I really like this one. So um, let's drag it in here. I'm gonna make a new audio track. I'll say here harmony. So now what I'm doing, I'm just gonna fill up the, let's say the empty MIDI clips. Of course, where I have to uh, work with audio, I'm just gonna make a new audio track and drop it in there. And I have, in my workflow, I already set up the default audio track with a, uh, with a fab filter and a utility because, well, it's just easier and I, I dropped it 10 dBs. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this throughout. So we have like a kind of a harmonic back, backbone, you know? You can also make it a bit more interesting. I like to use movement. This is from output. It's a very nice plugin. And what it does, uh, well, it's a little bit self-explanatory by the name of it, but it has a lot of uh, things going on that you could either map or just use presets. And it has filters, delays, LFOs, etc. You name it. Um, usually the first one, the first patch, yeah, patch, sounds great. With and without, nice. But what I also want to do, I want to go to my audio effects and add uh, mastering, mastering um, effect on the master, just to have a little bit more meat on the <laughs> on the output. So let's check maybe this one. Go for the lighting clean, and then I'm gonna play with it later. Just you know, just to have like a, a better reference of what's gonna sound when it's 
louder. What's gonna sound like when it's louder? Okay, this is distorting a bit, so I don't like it that much when it's distorting. I think this is better. Okay, a filter. I'm gonna duck the sound here a little bit. I, I'm pushing, uh, I'm pushing option, and then I drag with the mouse a point here, and it's a, actually a dynamic point. So you see, it moves with the sound. All right. Okay, now let's build our chords. Uh, but perhaps first we should have something rhythmic. So let's go back to the samples. And let's check some drums. Maybe hat loops. Kind of like this. Yeah, let's use this one. So remember what I said about the tops here. I had the top track. What is it? Uh, kick perk tops here. So I'm just gonna make the tops. I'm gonna drop this sample here, this loop. Right, so this is just, just to get started. I'm gonna replace this, uh, the naming of it, tops. Okay, so we have a little bit of groove in it. And I want to change the BPM, I'm going to put it 123 because it's going to sound a little bit more alert. I think that's better. Okay, what I also like to do sometimes, use the vocoder. Because it has some nice, um, you can add a little bit of noise on the drums. Ah, there we go. And you know what's gonna do this? When I'm gonna build the, when I'm gonna make the build up, then I can use the release. Cool, so let's build the chords now. I'm gonna use for the chords Diva because Basic Waves has some really nice Diva presets. So I can already drag it directly onto the MIDI track because, uh, well, obviously this is MIDI. So for the melodies and also for some other rhythmical elements, I like to use Push. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. It's my go-to. So easy to make melodies, harmonies, etc. Build chords. And uh, yeah, let's see what uh, I'm gonna come up with. So uh, let's find some presets here. I have, some, I have already some favorites. Uh, baseline pad maybe. Perhaps we can use this. Let's see the other one. Maybe. Pretty majestic. This could be interesting. Let's set it on repeat, eight notes. something a little bit more dreamy. Too low. I think that 
is some kind of uh, micro tuning here. I'm gonna use another preset. This is a good one. So let's, um, we have the course there. Let's hit capture. So I already have my chords here beautifully. I love the capture from Ableton. <laughs> let's see how it sounds. All right, so that's my first chord right there. Let me hide this window here and let's go into the drawing mode. Just gonna shift everything to the right. Oh yeah, went a bit too far. Let me that one there. Alrighty. Let's put it here. Okay. So this is my, these are my bases for the melody. the chords let's draw in some bass we were looking at the picture earlier and I was talking about these cars maybe I can use the cars as a preset preset arrangement for the notes so we have how many cars here we have four five six I'm just gonna use the cars parked on this side so let's draw in six notes for the bass I'm gonna use again diva for the bass and again i had one here that i favorited from basic waves this one the medusa one so we said six notes I, although i i would like to go quite repetitive with the bass perhaps follow the chords but let's see how far we're gonna get so let's see the notes we have e d c and a e d c and a all righty so we said six notes now one two three four five six Let's see if we can organize them in a way that it makes sense. They're a bit too, too high up and too loud. I think higher. So here is where I'm gonna go a little bit outside of, of our picture pattern, architecture pattern, because I do need more notes. Something like this. 
Bist du? Ja. Now A is a bit too low. I'm gonna put it one octave higher. That A sounds a bit weird, so we can also choose another note from the chords. Let's say, let's go to the third. So we have one, two, three. Don't like it? Let's go back to E. I don't like it. So we're gonna keep it on the A for now. I'm just gonna put the filter, I'm gonna make it a bit closed. Whoopa. Diva, where are you? There you are. All right, now let's bring in a kick, because I need some power. Um, I'm gonna bring from drums, the drum rack, and I had already uh, listened to the kicks from Basic Waves and there's so many that are just amazing, <laughs> they're lovely, I love this pack. <laughs> These packs actually, because there's like multiple of them. So we're working in C major, right? Uh, and the corresponding note in minor is A. So I guess we could choose a kick that is in either in C or in A, just to keep things simple and harmonious. The kick is very important, that is in the root note or at least is one of the notes from the uh, key. So uh, let's let's start with uh, with an A, I would say. I actually like this. I like, I like this one a lot. I'm gonna drop it here. Now. Let's record the notes. Okay, out of uh, sync, but I'm gonna fix it right now. There. Okay, that's not too bad. Just gonna make one note. Loop. You know, it still feels quite slow, the project time. Uh, the signature, so I'm gonna, not the signature, sorry, the BPM, so I'm gonna put it higher. Let's say 125. Yeah, better. All right, now let's take a tom. And first I'm gonna populate the whole track with the kick. Remove it there, boom. Let's take a nice tom sounding. Um, I'm not sure if there's any toms here. Let's see, basic waves. There are. And if my understanding is correct, they are already in C. Oh, okay, well, there's also some loops. I would say I'm gonna go with the one shot because it's just easier to build the rhythm. This one sounds quite interesting, so I'm gonna drop in the drum rack. What? Low tom, back to the samples. I like that, sounds more like a kick. I also like this. And there was another one that I liked uh, here at the top. Like a more low. This one I like. All right, now let's build a little rhythm. 
Let's see first which one we're gonna use. So with this, uh, with the toms, I like to draw it indirectly. It's easier. So let's say. So mean more. That's the kick. I need the tom. This third one is quite low in volume. I'm gonna pump up the volume. Is the same? Yeah. Let's pump it up. Better. So I'm just gonna see if I can imagine a little bit the, the toms before I actually start drawing them in. Okay, so there. Well, you know what? Let's try and record it. That's better, right? Not in time, but we're gonna fix it right now. Okay, they need to be, that one needs to be there. And I don't want the tom to fall on the kick. Not there. Nope, also not. No. That's the position. I'm gonna loop this. Let's try the other tom sound. I like them. I'm gonna mute the chords because they are uh, a little bit distracting. I think I need more toms, so I'm gonna put one maybe also here at the beginning. Let's see how it's gonna sound. on a Mac and then I'm gonna make a variation here. Let's see if it's gonna, at, at the end of the clip, I'm gonna make a variation. Let's see if it's gonna work. Okay, that's good. Now, so let's uh, let's add a fab filter to filter out the unnecessary low frequencies. And also the sound is a little bit too long, so I'm gonna make it a bit shorter. And to be honest, I think the position can be improved of the toms. So let's try to put them more here. Or there. No, maybe here. So I like the second note, I don't like the first note. So this is the rabbit hole I was talking about. You start somewhere and <laughs> you end up elsewhere. But that's also the beauty of it. I like it with one note actually a lot more. So less is more, always. I like it like this. I'm going to keep it.
All right, so now let's uh, loop this baby. And drag it throughout the whole track. Now, so we have our groovy part right there. All right, so we have our tops, we have uh, our chords. Let's uh, take also the bass to the next level. It's already looping. No, now it's looping. I'm gonna take it throughout. I don't want to have it here in the middle, and I was saying that I want to start off with the uh, bass only with one melody, uh, sorry, one melody, one note to begin with, there. We are in E, so E is uh, neither C or A, because, well, we're working in C major, and the corresponding key is A minor. Let's move this in C, and see how it sounds. Cool, now our harmony here at the top needs to be a little bit low and I'll add a filter on top of it just to uh, be able to play with the opening and closing. So, uh, let me see. Perfect, great, I love it. Okay, now let's uh, dive into the melody a little bit. So we have our chords. I'm gonna loop this part, maybe I'm gonna loop this part here. All right, so I really like this uh, Deadmau5 sound. I had it somewhere in my favorites. Oh yeah, there you go. It's actually quite nice. It's from the from the main uh, library of uh, Repro. I love it. Now let's see what we can do with it. Cool. I'm gonna put the chords on just to to have the the harmonic in the background. Start my uh, melody palette. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to record this. Well, make it uh, flat. So let's see, we have it here. Bon. So I'm going to record one more time. Perhaps I'm going to get a better idea this time. Let's see.
need to find <clears throat> the sweet spot. I like what I'm doing, but there is something here going on that I don't like. Um, and when I move up, I don't really like it anymore. So I think I need to follow the chords a bit more. All right, let's uh, try again. Let's capture it and I'm gonna use a trick that probably you know it already. <laughs> I really like using it. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the two MIDI clips. So the one with the chords and the one with the notes, with the melody. And I'm gonna see where my melody falls based on the notes from the chords. So Let's see where we can uh, improve a little. I'm just gonna try to follow the, the, the chords as much as possible. So maybe here we're gonna go on a seventh note. So we are now on the fifth. Is it fifth? Uh, yeah, fifth. And then we're gonna go there. So I really like it here. Perhaps before it starts again, I can go on the seventh note of the following chord. So that would be E. I like that. Da -da 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 -da. Here I want to have a bit more um, power in these notes. Also that one a bit longer. Oopa. So here I want them a bit more emphasize the notes and I'm going to have to play with the velocity. The velocity of these two notes here below. Yeah. Pushing uh, command and then pulling them up. Let's see what the, how it's gonna sound. Still a little bit higher, I want this note. I think it goes up a little bit too early. So what I would prefer to have, perhaps duplicate this whole chord, uh, sorry, chord, the, the whole melody into the second part. And here in the first part, so I'm going to make this one clip, Command J. I want to play a little bit more with, the, with these notes and see if I can get uh, some more movement so it's not so repetitive. I go again on C. Mm. So that note I wanted longer. There at the end, just gonna gra drag it along. That's command with uh, mouse click. Let's go here and see how it sounds on D. Okay, now this note either needs to be better or gone. So let's see if uh, I can perhaps make this uh, sound a bit more appealing. All right, so here I need to follow the these notes. I like them, but they need to follow the chords and um, I think it was E. We had the chord E here, if I'm not mistaken. 
Let me see. Yes, we had chord E. Perhaps on G. I like it. I like it a lot. What I miss now at the beginning of uh, the whole phrase, I miss the beginning notes, just like I have in the second parts, but I'm gonna do them and then let's go maybe on E, otherwise I'm gonna go on the fifth note. Nah. I like it here, actually I think this is really good. So let's see if that makes sense musically. It makes sense because we're using the C major uh, scale. And also we have, let's see if we have find in the E chord, we're gonna find the C note somewhere. So we have here one, three, five, seven, uh, nine, 11, 12, okay. Okay, yeah, it, it could work. I mean, it works anyway, but you know, in the context of the chord. So I think I'm gonna keep it like that. I really like it. Something's still off here. Yeah, so let's let's leave it. Hmm. Wait, what happened there? Oh, I thought I left it on <laughs> on C, but it was on E. So what I want to have, I want to have the resolution from the ending of the clip and then coming back to home more or less. But the thing is that my first chord in the chord progression is not home. It's not uh, uh, C. It doesn't have C there, so it's the E chord. Now it feels a little bit more like home, so I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna go with this. Okay, so <clears throat> let's listen again to this first clip that we made, and I'm gonna give a different color. No, don't like it, out. Okay, I'm gonna use this one, let's... Uh, make like an introduction here okay and now we have the uh, melody answer and and ans answer question and answer <laughs> all right uh have the repro and let's see if we can find a nice a nice synth i also had this uh yeah perhaps let me check again at the flux, see if I can find something nice. Now the answer, I want to have it a little bit more deep, I would say, just as a complementary to the question melody. Let's see if we can have like some sort of arpeggiated uh, sequence. Mm -hmm. like this dun, dun. okay let's record that so Try to use that capture. Obviously, the rhythm is uh, off. 
but let's fix it. So I'm going to use the quantize again. But I don't remember what was my quantize settings. So I'm going to check it quickly. Quantize, quantize, quantize. Oh, it's like 100% amount. That's a little bit too intense. So let's do it, uh, yeah, 56%. Okay. Command U. Maybe this note a bit forward. I want to have the velocity a bit louder. Something is here off with the melody. I think this is good. All right, but I need now a different instrument because I don't really like that one. Let's see if this favor that I had here works. So, favorites, again from the base library of uh, Repro. Good. I think we have something going on. Let's see where we're going to introduce this one. Uh, and if it does work with the other melody. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to loop this. Okay, now they are uh, all over the place, so I need to make a decision on which one has a uh, place and where. So, let's see. I think it's nice that it starts, the answer melody starts first, <laughs> so I'm kind of swapping them. And then the question melody begins. Let's see. Perhaps that one muted there. Okay, so I'm gonna make more room here by actually now I'm gonna add some of the notes back in. Let's see how that sounds. Maybe they're not. Something is off here. Perhaps I need to keep that off there, the melody. I think this part can go here and then I'm going to mute it there. This is a little bit rushed, so let's see, there is also this note is a little bit uh, off. I'm going to put it a bit more tight. I think there is an LFO in the synth that is um, interacting with the attack of the note. I think now it's better. I think that uh, lining up to the quantizing it straight on the on the line it helped. So before I continue, I'm just gonna. 
drop here Pro Q3 to remove some of the rumble. Again, I have here some. Uh, yeah, I think it just doesn't like this synth based on the LFO uh, when it starts before or after the, the actual note. So uh, I'm just going to move the notes around. Okay, I think this sounds good. Now, we have this melody. I'm gonna change the color. Okay. I came across uh, the vocal library as well from the Basic uh, Waves pack, and uh, I love it also. <laughs> so, let's see. There was one particular vocal that I liked that fits. <coughs> Excuse me, with the yeah, with the with the C major or A minor. Let's first check the the top lines. Uh, I'm not sure if it was here. And are you water? And are you are you water? Thousand miles. Away. No, we had the uh, hooks also. Let's see A minor. I'm just gonna search here A minor. Don't let this I don't want I don't want a lot I don't want a lot I don't I don't want Just say how you feel Just say how Just say how you feel Just say how you feel just tell me now Just say how you feel Just tell me now It was the wet one that I was exper experimenting with uh, some Don't let this be a lie I don't wanna love you Just say how you feel Oh, I love this Okay let me drop it in a new audio track. It's a, it's a big, uh, it's a big uh, uh, chance that I'm not gonna end up using it or keeping it in the track, but we're gonna try it out and see what uh, the result is gonna be. Just say how you feel. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna move on to the next section of the song, which is the main break. And I'm gonna experiment with this vocal and see if it makes sense to use it here at the break. Remember that I was saying that um, I would like some melody at the break. Perhaps instead of having a melody, we can have this vocal. So let's see if it's gonna work. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. Just say how you feel Just tell me now Beautiful So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add some um, percussive elements but I want them a little bit uh, out of this world more cinematic so to speak Let's see where we can find something like this We have acoustic drum fills That could work Minimal shaker Trash can loops, perhaps. They sound nice. Let's see. Just say how you feel. Just 
Let's see how this drum sounds in the context of the track. Interesting. I like this percussive loop. Let's see where we're gonna place it. First of all, some EQ. And some parts need to be removed because it doesn't really work with the track. I'm also wondering, so it's, uh, this one is D sharp minor. Uh, perhaps we need to tune it. Let's go one low. All right. <coughs> I don't like that part with the... Let's see the... the that one I don't like, so I'm going to remove it. Also here, also here, and I'm gonna do something uh, crazy with it. I'm gonna try to resample it. So, the way I'm gonna resample it is, uh, this is here, part two. I'm gonna make a new audio track, and uh, I'm gonna choose the input from the perk two. Yeah, in. And now I'm gonna add some of my favorite plugin, Portal. This is a really cool one. Probably many of you already know it. I'm not sure. It used to be a bit obscure a while ago, but now I think it's uh, it's pretty pretty common uh, to use it. So the Portal is a granular processing, which means that uh, it picks up. Uh, well, you can you can. Play with the oscillators and with various effects and then add quite some um, parameters uh, as effects on top of a sound which can really bend it and stretch it and make it sound out of this world. So what I'm gonna do actually I'm just gonna render well render I'm gonna record whatever comes out of portal into a new channel for this particular uh, sound that I have here loop. So let's see. Okay, I need something a little bit more rhythmical. So I'm gonna go for the, I had here some rhythmical stuff, perhaps at the drum category. Let's see, Stutter Butter. <laughs> That's a nice name for a preset. No. What I'm gonna do before I record, because there is some nice bits in here that could be actually good for snare, so I'm gonna duplicate this part, uh, this uh, channel, and I'll say here snares, and uh, it's basically like a clap slash snare, and I'm only gonna keep, let's see, yeah, that's nice. 
let me mute this for now. Oh, it was okay in the same position that it was. Okay, so. Okay, also use that one. There, place it. And uh, I think I'm gonna copy the same sample, but first the same crop of the sample, but first I want to make sure that it sounds good. So, a little bit shorter. And this one can be a bit longer, the second one. All right, so we have some kind of a better groove going on. Now I'm gonna go again to the CLA plugin and I'll add it in here because it gives a really nice vibe. I love it already. Okay, but here I'm gonna go for a different uh, sound. I think the reverb can go out completely. The slap is nice. This is great. I love it. Okay, so we also have our snares. I have to check if they still make sense in terms of harmony. I think for now they would do. Just gonna bring it down a little bit the volume. All right, now let's see what we can do with the actual percussion we had in here. I'm gonna change the color of this so I don't get confused what it is, assign track, uh, color to the clips as well. Now let's put the portal on and record. All right. Let's see what we can use from here now. Oh. Right, I'm gonna switch this back. It's a bit uh, low in volume. Let's see what we have in this first part. Let's hear it in the context. It's very messy, so I'm really not sure about it yet. Let me cut off some of the low end. And I want to bring it into the main break and see if it makes sense to perhaps use it here somewhere. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. So what we could do, because I don't really like it on its own, let's throw in the, maybe the Echo Boy from uh, sound toys, yeah. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. Just say. I think it could be interesting. I'm gonna add a, a filter, auto filter, and see if we can play with the auto filter a little bit. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. I think it can be kind of incidental snippets here and there 
more for texture. So it took uh, it took me in a different direction than I was uh, uh, anticipating, but that's okay because in the end, music production is also a lot of experimentation until you get to the sweet spots. Let's see, perhaps I'm gonna end up not using this. Um, I'm gonna name it something like Atmos Beats Perk. <laughs> Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. But I wanna have then the Echo Boy after the filter. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. Just say how you feel. And I'm gonna cut off more of the low end from it. Yeah. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. Okay, lower in volume. And now let's make some beautiful pads in the break. I'm gonna use Diva for that. We could also use Omnisphere. Let's try Omnisphere actually for this. Omnisphere is actually one of my favorite plugins for... Uh, where did it go? Pads for cinematic stuff. And I have this uh, hardware library. This comes, uh, well, it's already for a while in there, but it came with a newer version of Omnisphere. And uh, the hardware library is basically a combination of hardware and software. And you can also map it with hardware, like the Virus TI2. I don't know if you guys heard of that. It's, it's a classic synth, probably you have. And you can make these uh, nice integrations also with the Prophet. So it has sampling from this uh, synth and also uh, the, the virtual part of, of uh, the synthesis and it combines very nicely. So let's check what we have here. Hmm, virus, nice. <laughs> so I'm going to take the chords for now from, from the chords channel and I'm going to place it here. I'm going to make them longer because uh, yeah, I just want to hear the pad longer notes and then we take it from there. Just say how you feel Just tell me now Just say how you feel Just tell me now And this is where I want to play a little bit more with the melody on the well with the melody with the chords themselves and let's see if we can spice them up a little and when we go back to our reference picture building um, I was talking about the edges here so of the lights perhaps we can use implement this into the chords you know, and make them a little bit more shiny from from the pads so just let's add here like a seven just say but they're a bit too low in uh, with the velocity I'm gonna put them a bit higher just say how you feel I'm gonna put this note higher like an inversion Just say how you feel Doesn't sound good Just say how you feel Also this one goes up Just say how you feel Just tell me now Okay, let's add some more notes. See if we can uh, spice it up. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. Just tell me now. There. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. that one higher and I need another note here somewhere I think just say how you feel just tell me now just say how you feel just 
Okay, let's see if we can open up the filter a little bit. That's quite intense. <laughs> just say how you feel. I'm just going to enable the automation here. I enable host automation because uh, Omnisphere works in a different way. Um, to be able to move this uh, button, but it doesn't show up on my push, so I need to activated via this knob configure and then i have it here popping on the screen just say how you feel just tell me now just say how you feel just tell me now just say how you feel just tell me now just say how you feel. I'm not really convinced yet with this uh, patch. Let's pick another sound. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. Just say how you feel. Good. I think we can use this one. Just tell me now. Let's see if bringing the melody is going to do something interesting or not. Just say how you feel. Not really, that melody not. Let's see this part of the melody. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. Just say how you All right, I like that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna duplicate this channel and I'll drop here another synth. I'll replace this scene because I want to have it a little bit more rough building up. So I'll say here melody answer two. Let's actually open Diva and go to the basic waves presets. Analog explorations. Okay, nice. And uh, let's see if we have, I think I had also already some favorites. Plug cactus, let's see this one. Just say how you feel. Okay, I like it. Just say how you feel. Now, the thing that I wanna do is automate the cutoff. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. Just say how you feel. Just tell me now. All right, the voice here, I think it should go off or be lost somewhere into the reverb or delays. Okay, so we have our, our percussion here, we have our voice, we have our pad. Uh, we have the melody at the break and basically this I'm gonna replace with what I have here the melody answer so that would be the let's say the more different um, part of the initial melody because I'm gonna alter a little bit now this melody so let's see how we can make it sound better Just say how you feel. more repetitive okay see if I can use the repeat function from here. Be lower in the octave. 
something around those lines. Let's see if we can capture this. I don't like it. Again. Okay, so we have our, our, our melody here in the middle, we have the voice and we have this uh, percussive atmospheric element. Here the recording, I'm really not sure about it because I feel that it's cluttering the track a little bit, so let's hear it again with and without. Yeah, I think it's, it's a bit too much to be honest. Yeah, so I'm gonna remove it from there. Let's see the original sound again, how it sounds without the portal on it. No, it's not great. So uh, the percussion too can, can, can go. And I'm gonna keep the recording of it. Now, let's uh, populate a little bit here the track. I'm gonna fill in the, the claps. I'm just gonna make this a loop. Now I want to have a repetition of the clap here. So I'm just gonna make a, maybe like this. I don't like that, but let's see if we put it here. Or perhaps there. No, I think it can move a little bit more ahead, perhaps. Nope, also not... Uh, I think this is better there. Okay, and we can duplicate this throughout the whole track. Yeah, except at the break, I'm gonna remove it from there. So, let's take it out of here. Okay. Now, I need... Um, well, let me move also the chords all the way there. And uh, let's see what else we can do. We can also take the melody and put it there. Also this bit and this bit. Boom. Also let's duplicate that part there. And this part here. Um, yeah, the melody that I had here at the break, I really don't, I, I like it, but I, I think it's getting too much, it's getting too busy, so I'm going to remove some of the notes here. Yeah. So those notes have to go. Then it repeats here from this point on, and then we keep on going. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen at the drop. What I need here, I need a white noise. Let's see if we have white noise in the sample packs from uh, Basic Waves, FX and Atmos, okay. 
Background dirt. Hmm, nice. <laughs> Let's see. What is this? Nice. Okay, this is all harmonic. Let's see if we have some... Uh... Yeah, drones is nice. Hmm. Polars. All right. This is what I need. Let's see what's gonna happen. Risers. Good one. Perhaps the sweeps. Nice, I like this, okay. But I need a sweep up, I need a long one. Okay. Oh, train. Love it. I think I like this a bit more because it's more like white noise. So I'm going to place it there. Bring the volume down a bit. This is going to be white noise track. And let's play a little bit with it. The low end of the white noise is not populated and it's not so good. Just doing a, li a little extra cut there, just in case. Okay, now I'm gonna place it here and there. And there's gonna be like just a tiny, tiny one. Boom. But here at the break, I'm gonna keep it pretty much in full length. And instead of the crash, I'm gonna use a sweep down, actually. I like this. So, let's see. Good. They have a little bit too much uh, delay. I need something more impactful. So let's see fallers. Otherwise, I'm going to have to put a crash on it. Nah, I'm going to need a crash or a cymbal. Drums, let's see. OK. I like this one. Let's see how it works in the context. I also need a little build there, so I'm gonna put this here, reverse it, and it's gonna make it like that. I think it needs to be lower in volume, so I'm gonna bring it lower from the sample editor here. Okay, I think that would do. So then again, uh, finishing, uh, like all these finishing touches, you know, they they take quite a lot of time. So uh, just gonna aim on having the idea nailed, more or less, and um, then we're gonna play from start to end and see what we have and what edits. Well, well, what what other um, modifications we can do, if needed.
All right, the crash I can remove then the uh, the MIDI. So now we have the repetitive hat here. Let's see what we can add. Maybe we have a shaker that we could play with. Let's see. Let's go for the drum loops. Interesting. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is good. I like this one. So, I'm gonna drop it here. It's a little bit too loose, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna set it to beats and then to uh, 16 bars and I'm gonna make a full stop here and I'm gonna play a bit with the transients basically. Okay now it sounds a bit more tight. So let's drag this throughout. Okay. I think this sounds good. Okay, we can remove this harmony. There, the melody can repeat once more. Once more. So here I would go a little bit longer without the bass changing notes. Remember we had the harmony here, so I'm gonna automate the, the filter opening of the harmony. And here needs to happen something with the hats because I feel there are too many going on. Okay, what we're missing here, we're missing uh, like an actual hat of beat. So I'm removing the other one, the shaker that I already have here. Let's say shaker. And like a s -s -s. So let's see what we find. Hat. Perhaps this will do. Let's see. Very nice. So I'm going to keep this track actually. Uh, I'll, I'll make it hat number one. And I'll remove it from there and from there, just like we initially be began with. Feels like it's losing a lot of the energy, so I'm gonna move that one there. Let's see if we can make some room 
this way I'm gonna use then the release of the of the white noise from the vocoder to build it up. The voice, I also want it a little bit sporadically added. Maybe there, and then there, there. So let's see how we're gonna play with it. Okay, so I'm gonna add on top of it the movement, which I like a lot <laughs> from output. Sorry, I was here. Let's see. Good. Just some snippets here and there. Okay, I feel that there we should have the pads coming in, but then like the basic pads, so derived from, from the chords, uh, the simple ones. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. Sorry, duplicate. I'm gonna um, uh, make it longer. Wait. All right, let's start simple with one at a time. Okay. When I hold shift and I select the notes, I can select multiple notes at the same time. And now, make it longer. All right. Okay, but then I want this higher. And here in this part, I want the pads to open up a bit more. So just gonna do like this little automation there. But it's very sensitive, this um, filter. So I need to see if I can bring it a little bit down. What was it? It was the ENV or the key. I don't remember which one, which button was it. I think it was this one. Let's see. So it's nice, a little bit open, but I'm going to close it. Maybe I'll put it at point 10. Let's say point 10. Oh, that's too low. What is, oh, it's 15 the basis. It's gonna be point, uh, let's say 16, because it's very sensitive. to configure this knob because it doesn't pick it up. But now it's gonna appear here on my push, which is great. All right, let's record this as I'm twisting the knob.
like it, very good. Now here the melody I want to have just snippets, I don't want to have the full melody because it's like an introduction or a reintroduction of the melody and here it's gonna come on in full swing. So it's good. Okay, I also want to automate here. Okay, so here the melody, I think uh, this melody can go. Uh, sorry, the other way, the other one. This one can go because it feels like it gets a little bit too much. So let's listen. So the kick needs to go there, just you know, for some nice energy. And I would leave this uh, hat on because it's it feels like too much energy is uh, going away. And then I'm gonna make here this uh, adjustment of the automation. Alright, and I'm gonna make the automation of this also. Wait, because we need to activate the... I forgot what is the name of this, but I need to push this plus in order to not mess up with my notes when I record. This melody break I can delete, the bass break I'm gonna add it somewhere, let me see where, here, I'm gonna go with Diva for this, and I'm gonna choose one of the basic waves, bass, let's see what we have here. A bit too much, I need something that's more stable. This is good. And I'm gonna follow the notes of the chords. Got my chords here. E, D, C and A. You know what I just realized, when I recorded the chords, I was not playing the normal triads, I was playing inversions. So actually, the chords, um, they are organized differently than I thought initially. So yeah, this one, I think the first chord is basically, it's an A because it's uh, inverted. And uh, I need to check the bass if it still makes sense because now the bass is going, well, it's following the notes from the chords but not the root notes. So let me double check that actually. Yeah, so we have here, then we would have the A to begin with, G, F, and then a D. So let's see if that's the case. A, G, F, D. I'm gonna do this quickly. A, G, F, and D.
So this is versus this, right? So this is how we had the notes from the bass organized before. That doesn't mean that it's, the, it's not sounding, it still sounds good, um, but it might sound different. Some people organize the bass in this way. They don't go with the root note of the, of the chords. lower I like it better this way so I'm gonna keep it like this it sounds a little bit more fused into the melody Put the same bass here. I'm gonna copy it, and now I'm gonna make the, make it longer notes. It's gonna go there, F, D. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate it up to there, and the melody two answer. I'm gonna duplicate it as well because I want to have the top part separated from the uh, bottom part. So bear with me. Mm, I think that's it. Okay, now let's remove the top part here. Because now what I can do, I can close the filter of this top one. There's something weird happening here, so I need to fix it. I think it's the last bit of the melody at the top. Let me make this a different color so I know what it is. I'm gonna make it pink. Now, I'm gonna start off with A here. So I'm gonna copy these three notes just to have the melody continue. to be on a different position. Great, I love it. Okay, and this is gonna come out, uh, come in a bit later. Here I'm missing a note, so let's add that note there. I'm just gonna do something very simple. Actually, I'm just gonna mute this. Not sorry, not mute. Um, I'm gonna make it one MIDI clip, change the color, and then just gonna duplicate this over and over. And here at the break, I want to have the snares going a little bit ta 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 ta. They're not loud enough. I'm just gonna pump up the volume. Perhaps a bit too loud. OK, 
getting the drum fill there. Bear with me. Drum fill. There you go. I think that's good. Let's see what we can do with this. It's at 120. I'm gonna go down to 120 BPM. I'm gonna remove the warp. I'm gonna go back to 120, no, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna first warp it and then go back to 125. This needs to be a bit louder. I still don't like these snares here. I need another snare. Snare. I think that's good. The one here, let's see if we can use this. I think we're gonna have the same problem. Yeah, that's at 120. Quick way to, uh, to fix it, warp back to 125. Yeah. I don't necessarily like the tail of this, so I'm just gonna cut it down a bit. Okay, now I need a white, not a white noise, like a, a riser. There you go. Maybe this one. Let's see. Perhaps a bit too much, but let's let's see if this is gonna work nicely. Okay, nice. I need the release. Was it uh, build tension builders? Down, sweep down. That's it, boom, let's put it here. Right, the perk I'm gonna remove because we already have it. The tops also I'm gonna remove because we already have it. And I feel that the melody should continue there uh, at the drop. So perhaps this one. Okay, let's see if we can, let me think about it. Maybe we're gonna use this melody that we had before and we just prolong it. Okay, let's see if we can swap a little bit the MIDI notes between the instruments. it here so I'm gonna start off with it at the top let me drag in a utility just to bring up the volume a little bit
this part here. Okay, actually that's a bit too loud, so this part can go. Now I need to tame this tiny bit. Just gonna put the volume down. Okay, so I think we are, so the, the idea is there. And uh, we already have quite a few instruments here that we can choose from. And I feel that some things can go out or can be placed in different uh, parts of the track to make the track a bit more interesting. So let's listen now from beginning to end. And uh, if there's anything that I feel that I can change now, I'll do it. And uh, basically this is as far as I could go today. So uh, let's hear it. So not bad for the time we had, see you next time.